who are Center for Excellence here, as amongst you. And if you go on the website, you'll see all kinds of wonderful things, including all our previous seminars. So you can go and watch them in the privacy of your own home. Hopefully, you won't fall asleep when you're watching them, and you can always go back. Today, it's my great pleasure, and I, mean, I really say that with, uh, with conviction, because one of the aims of our settlement is to encourage blended learning. It's one of my pleasures to introduce you to Dr. Ursula Stickler. Uh, Ursula is from the Open University, where she's been for several years. Uh, <coughs> getting a bit old now, I need to put my glasses. Uh, she started off in Austria. She did her undergraduate degree in Austria in one of my favorite subjects, <coughs> philosophy. Yeah, I did my degrees in philosophy and psychology too. So you can see how far, how important philosophy has been to bring us to this new era. Um, she then, after Austria, uh, moved to Sheffield, where she taught German for several years, about five years, she tells me. And then she moved to the Open University, where she's a lecturer in German, and she's also the head of the virtual learning uh, group at the in the Department of Languages. Some of you may already know, I didn't. She has written many materials for the German language teaching, language courses at all levels, from beginners to diploma courses, uh, including you know, various tasks for the virtual learning environments, and also several online tutorials. Her research interests uh, center on issues of uh, independent language learning, including technology-enhanced uh, language learning, and tandem learning, which I hopefully I'll learn a bit more about at some point today, if not during the talk. Uh, she's currently involved in projects researching the use of virtual learning environment tools for language learning and training tutors for online language teaching. Now, for those of you who know me, uh, you know, I always try to bring a bit of uh, humor and lightness to the proceedings. So as I was chatting a little bit before this, I said to her, so tell me something funny about you. And she said, yeah, I'm not funny about this. So we're hoping that she will tell us in a very serious manner uh, about her topic, which is, which is basically integrating online learning courses in distance language courses. Over to you, Ursula. She'll talk for about 30, 40, 30, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll have a few uh, time for a little a few questions and discussion, and then we can do it more informally, just outside there, without, I gather, Sibylla telling me not bring any drinks in here, we can have some drinks just outside. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> They're not funny, but I'm, I'm quite relaxed about it, but if you have any questions in between, please just interrupt. I'd, I'd try to you ask the questions when it's really a burning issue, and if, or if I, before I confuse you, I'd rather you ask a question, I can explain what, uh, what I want to say. If that's not a problem for the recording, Sibylle. Uh, no, no, it is <laughs> not. a problem. No. Integrating online learning in distance language courses, I'm going to, uh, after a brief introduction, give you three examples of uh, integrated courses that we produce at the OU. Um, one of them is Cyberdeutsch, a fully online course, the Motive, the interactive uh, tasks of this course are on the VLE, on the virtual learning environment, and then Variationen, just briefly about the course we're producing now, where the content is also presented for the VLE. Um, I'm going to mention online tutorials in passing, and if we've got time at the end, I would like to show you um, the software that we are using for online tutorials now, which is eliminated, but hopefully it will work. No technical problems this evening. Um, I'm going to talk about the integration of online elements as well, which is the, the topic that uh, the question people ask me, how to integrate bits of online into other uh, elements of courses, so a blended approach to learning. And of course, we'll discuss hopefully problems and benefits. I've noted down a few, but I'm sure you've got lots of uh, your own ideas about the problems of online learning and hopefully also about the benefits and the good points about it. Now, for those of you who don't know the Open University, and I think I won't be any here, so I'll just repeat myself and interrupt me if I'm boring you. The Open University is in its 40th year now, so we're celebrating our 40th birthday this year. Uh, it started in 1969 with distance teaching, and that was a, a fairly new concept to the uh, UK at that time. This, uh, it was basically the idea to open up learning for everyone at every time, every place, 
and regardless of their educational background. So the Open University accepts students without A-levels, without GCSE, without prior qualifications. We just sort of offer the courses if the students uh, can manage to study them, if they can pass the exams, then they can gain a degree at your university. They do not have to, to have uh, qualifications before that. Now, languages were subjects that were introduced fairly late at the OU uh, because it was considered to be a difficult subject to teach online. Because as you all know, it's not just about delivering uh, knowledge, delivering content to students and they just sit at home and learn it. But uh, languages need a lot of practice, a lot of interaction, the communication is important for languages. And that also, at that time, with technology available to people in the 60s, 70s, wasn't that easy to, to do. Um, but we do have su successful language courses now since the 1990s. We've gradually introduced more and more technology into the courses. We've used audio conferencing since 2003. It was simply uh, talking over the internet with graphic elements, but not uh, video. Um, and we've used that for tutorials and also for some of the exams. And in 2007, well, just before 2007, the Open University introduced Moodle as its virtual learning environment. Now this decision was actually based on, on student demand. The students wanted to have uh, computer skills integrated in all the courses at the Open University. So they wanted to, to show when they passed an exam at the OU that they also have some uh, computer skills. And the OU reacted by just uh, selecting one of the virtual learning environments available at that time. And I for one am extremely happy that they chose an open source software. They chose Moodle, which is available uh, free for everyone. Everyone can use it, download it, change it, change the uh, source code, update it, and then hopefully return the improved code to the wider community and to the, to the Moodle community. The Moodle, there's this various ways of describing it. The Americans call it the course management system, which is a, a a phrase I don't like because it's not about managing courses, it's not about managing students, it's about offering them a way of, of communicating. I think. It's also known as a learning management system, which is a little bit more user friendly, uh, or a virtual learning environment, which sort of encompasses all of the options that, that uh, Moodle or that the VLEs offer. They do block students, so you know what your students are doing. You can sort of guide them towards one course or the other. You can allow them entrance to sort of various courses and block them from other courses. Uh, but they also are a platform for communication between the students. And most importantly, it's a free web, web application that educators <coughs> can use to create effective online learning sites. In lots of schools, download Moodle. Lots of small projects also use Moodle. Um, and I've, I've heard recently that also the NHS has used Moodle, which I do not understand at all because they're not trying to, to learn or to teach something. They're trying to manage their data, which is not what Moodle does. It's not the data management system. It's not the, uh, a database. It is really a virtual environment for people who want to learn and teach online. Now, the OU itself had, has uh, taken the, the open source software, added a lot of code so that it uh, created new tools, for example, new modules as it's called in, in Moodle, uh, new options for, for students to work, and also integrated other uh, bits into Moodle. And they, they've given, so I'm told, they've given all of it back to the um, online community, to the Moodle community, where it's changed again and updated and integrated into other courses. Okay, now let's start with the, the first course, the Cyberdeutsch course. This was our first reaction to when, when we learned that um, we're going to use Moodle for all our courses. The first reaction was not, not panic, but oh, let's go and play. Let's see what we can do online and, and what tools are available and what our students would do with all the tools there. So this is a, an experimental course, it was a pilot course created for uh, students who were volunteers, not uh, doing the, the course as part of their, their regular degree, but uh, volunteering for an additional course, for an additional five very intensive weeks of, of uh, practicing and learning journey. Um, 
the course was created by uh, two colleagues of mine and my, myself. It was created very quickly over one summer. We, we wrote the materials, we sort of designed all the tools, how they would fit together um, into, the, into the course. We then were very lucky to get some funding to have two tutors who actually taught two groups uh, online for five weeks, but quite intensive weeks. And uh, it was delivered fully online. There was no face-to-face -face contact. Um, I've never seen any of the, the students apart from on video, uh, in the video conference. And even with the tutors, we only had uh, video con uh, contact, the occasional telephone contact with uh, one or two students who had massive technical problems, so they wouldn't touch the computer anymore, so they phoned us. But in her favor, I have to say she was four, 84 years old and not very <laughs> computer literate at the start of the course, and she did continue right to the end and got her own blog in the end. So it, it was a little bit of, of problems when we. Uh, had to, to use other tools rather than just the uh, CyberDodge website and, and workspace. What we tried to use were the tools, of course, the, um, the tools that were already there in the Open University's Moodle version, uh, but not all the tools were satisfactory. Uh, Moodle had at that time a blog that was just nothing like uh, any blog that you would expect to function. There was no possibility of writing comments on the blog, for example. Uh, no no possibility of answering to comments, no uh, option of uploading pictures or images or linking from there. So it was really basic. I don't know why they called it a blog. It was something completely different. And we used blogger.com at that time, and we fed back to uh, people who worked on, on the Moodle um, really that we needed some more functionality for the blogs and also for the, for the wiki. We used Flash <coughs> Meeting, which is a um, the software developed by the, uh, by the OU, by the Knowledge Media Institute of the OU, who, like us in languages, like to play around with all these try out new tools and uh, develop new software just to see what happens if we have it. And um, Flash Meeting was one of these tools we got for free at the OU, and it is for free for, for everyone to use as, as well. It is uh, for educational purposes, and you, can, um, you don't have to pay for it. We also used SurveyMonkey for surveys because, again, the, the Moodle survey at that time only allowed the tutor to ask one question and the students to answer, but we wanted the students to be able to ask questions as well and as many questions as they like. Okay, now that's the starting page of the um, Cyberdeutsch course. So what we got basically from the OU was one workspace where we could upload uh, as the course creators and the course authors we could upload what we wanted on there there's a um, the central spine is given as in all you always have one central column of information down there you can choose what you want to happen there we chose to uh, organize it around the calendar so we created a course that was structured to weeks and within the week we had um, either ch uh, some some tasks, some materials, or links outside <coughs> the workspace for the uh, students to do their work. There's always the first thing for the students of German, the first thing in, in every week is the Wochenübersicht, so that's an, an overview of all the tasks to do that week. And then, uh, of course, in the, in the first preparatory week, we also had to introduce the, the tools to teach some basic uh, computer skills were not basic because it needed to be able to log into the workspace already, but some skills to do with particular tools that we were using. Now these are the different elements we used for the, for the course. As I said, we wanted to use as many as, as possible just to get feedback from the students and also from the tutors of what is useful. And we also wanted to have the different elements of how to use uh, online tools and online teaching. So there's the, the use of individualized work, for example, in the blogs. The blog was something that the students created their own blog on blogger.com. And they wrote their own stories, they were encouraged to write about themselves, to read the image about themselves, and then write about their interests. The only um, task we gave them was to write in German, and that, that was all. They could write about music, about traveling, about their house, their pets, whatever they wanted. And we, we set them certain tasks to 
complicity, visit other people's blogs and leave comments there. Then there was the, the wiki, which was a collaborative task, specifically created as something where students would write together and create one final product together. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, because that was one of the things that wasn't too successful, but we tried it anyway and it was created for that purpose. We had the flash meetings, the, the video conference for synchronous um, teaching, so those were the, the times when the students had to be online at the same time, logging in the same flash meeting and uh, speak in German with the tutor and with their colleagues. We had some more autonomous work like the quizzes, which we found was quite important for um, distance for online students because the quiz gives you immediate feedback on how am I doing and if the students liked it because it, it didn't feel like somebody is, is uh, observing them and judging them. It was just a computer telling them 80 out of 100 or uh, try again or whatever it said as a, as a response. And it's very quick so you don't have to wait for your kid to be online or for an email to be answered. The forum, we used the forums on Moodle for asynchronous discussion. So it was similar to the, to the flash meeting, similar to a tutorial where you discuss a certain issue, but it's asynchronous, so whenever you want to log in, you respond to somebody else's uh, post in the forum, or you open a new thread and you can ask your own questions and discuss things on the forum. Overall, the, the website was a sort of anonymous, uh, in inverted commas, anonymous <coughs> login, where students sometimes daily logged in to see if something happened. And I say anonymous with the commas because of course Moodle tracks all the, the students log in. So you could after the after the course you could check how often the student had logged in and uh, even down to the details of what they looked at on the website. We can't che uh, check how long they stay on there or whether they just logged in with the way drank a cup of coffee, came back half an hour later and turned off the computer. We don't know that. But we know how often students actually checked into the website and whether they did Okay, as this was the, the first online attempt uh, at the course, and we didn't know how computer literate or not our students were, we decided to introduce the tools gradually. It's a little bit of a task within five weeks to get in so many tools, but we thought if we start with one with eight different tools, the students would just give up there and then and say, I don't know, German is not uh, computing. But actually, we started quite <coughs> simple with, with the calendar, so they had to go to the website, find out what the tasks were. And then they had worksheets there, which were written in order, so they could just download them and print them off if they wanted to. Um, and the forum, which was at the beginning of the, of the first week, first contact with other students. The quiz they could do at the end of the week to check the, the progress. And then we gradually introduced more and more uh, different tools. And at the end, we had the survey with people feedback, um, which is one of the forms on Moodle where you can send um, comments on, on the course back to the course creators. The quizzes form, flash meeting, the web searches to do, and of course the worksheets and the calendar. This is just a screenshot of Flash Meeting, but for those of you who are interested in, in it and want to try it out, you can go to the Open University um, website um, and you find a link there to Open Learn where all the for free stuff of the Open University is uh, stored. And Flash Meeting is one of the for free tools, so education for educational use. You can just uh, book a meeting. Flash Meeting was created not specifically with teaching in mind and uh, certainly not with teaching languages in mind. So while we were negotiating what to use and uh, we had discussions with KMI, with the Knowledge Media Institute who created this tool and we asked them for certain features, we asked them to change certain things around and they reacted very quickly and did some of the things. Uh, but still it, it looks very much like a meeting tool, it looks like other, uh, I don't know, tools used for business meetings for example. 
it has one uh, feature that only allows one speaker at a time, so you can't do this natural interrupting or talking across one another that you would do in a face-to-face -face language class, for example. Uh, they gave us some very fancy technical reasons for that. I'm sure it's all true. It's, <laughs> it wouldn't work if everybody talked at the same time. Um, but it's not like a natural language class, really. The video slot, you've got uh, multiple videos, so up to 50 people at one time can log in. You wouldn't see lots of uh, little images there. You would just see a really a thumbnail of, uh, of people's video cameras. But you can change that view to having only the names of participants there. But you always get one big video image if, if somebody speaks, the image is broadcast and uh, the quality of that is, is quite good enough that you can see them, their lips moving and see that they're, they're speaking at that time. Um, you can also, you've got this, what is that? It's an open screenshot. You've got a, a hand raising button where you can actually queue up as, as the next speaker. And very important for tutors is you've got the interrupt button. Uh, the Knowledge Media Institute told us that we were, when we looked at uh, use of different buttons, three languages were the ones we used to interact the button most. <laughs> I think mean, it's not surprising. The way we teach and we just say, I want to speak now. So we just interrupt people rudely. <laughs> There's other features such as text chat and uh, voting and smiling so and the usual thing. But I think most importantly, is there's a focus on, on the speaker and on speaking. There is a whiteboard that opens in a new uh, window, and it, w it wasn't created with that in, in mind. So it's, it's a little bit different to other teaching tools that we're using. And it's different to the unit that I'll probably show you later. Uh, lessons learned, and I think that's, that was the whole purpose of doing this, this course and creating the course, apart from having fun, was we wanted to, to know what we can do in our real courses and what we cannot do. Um, so it was deliberately designed to combine, to throw everything at students and, and combine as many tools as possible. And that was one of the feedbacks we, we got from most users. Ooh, there's a lot to do. So there's this lot of, uh, to take in of tools and the language and all the websites and all the tasks we asked them to do. It was just masses. Uh, one of the things we learned is it's important to integrate the tools. Don't just give them all those different modules as it is presented in, in Moodle, for example, as one option. So there's a forum and there's a, a wiki and if you want to work on the blog, if you want to go away and do a, a chat, that's synchronous chat. If you write the tasks, try and combine tools. So do a discussion in the forum first, then write up the, uh, the results in, in a wiki, for example, or have an online uh, synchronous chat, whether spoken or, or in in writing and then uh, summarize what you've learned in the forum and then start a discussion or integrate some links. So uh, integrate the tools and integrate the tasks as well. It makes a lot more sense to the students. Um, there were of course some issues with the tools, some technical issues because they were from different sources. They were not, they didn't look very uniform. So for some students it was very confusing to go to blogger.com and have to use a different password uh, and then go back to Google and use a different password again and Flash Meeting uh, was linked from another part of the Open University website so it, it's a little bit confusing. We try to, uh, to change it now for our courses and try to link everything from, from the central workspace which helps a little bit but I don't know whether it's solved all the problems. Uh, there's also some perceptual problems because we introduced so many new tools and even for, for our tutors it wasn't always quite clear what's the difference between a forum and a blog. Why am I using a wiki now for this task and not, not my blog? Uh, and there's, I think, a lot of, of teaching to do before they can even start uh, working in, in the language, just telling them how to use the different tools and encouraging the tutors also to, to move students towards certain tools for certain tasks. A forum is ideal for discussions. It's not ideal if you want to write your life history and uh, what your pet looks like. Uh, it falls everybody else to tears in, in the forum if you write anything longer than, let's say, 150 words in, in the forum message. Uh, but if you want to, to do that, open a blog, everybody will be happy to, to see images of your little puppies or whatever you can offer them and uh, just look in and leave a comment. It's a better tool for that use. 
uh, in the forum. And also the keys are supposed to be collaborative learning. So if you have a typical sorry, English student and you're too shy to correct everybody else's mistake and just write a little comment there, I think actually that uh, Austria is uh, in the center of Europe and not in southern Europe. So you wouldn't do that in a week. You just go in, correct, and change uh, whatever mistake there is. And I think there's, again, a lot of, of learning to do for, for the students and for the tutors as well. Because they need to deal differently with different tools. Um, one of the positive things was the combination of collaborative and independent work. And, and lots of uh, students commented on that, that they could pick how they felt uh, about working, whether they felt going into a forum and chatting with other, other students, or whether they wanted to do something on their own and uh, focus on, on the grammar and so on. So having this choice, this, this whole palette uh, to pick and choose from, I think it can be quite motivating for some students. But as I said, there are co uh, issues with collaboration and group work. Our students particularly, because they're at a different uh, university, they're used to working on their own. They work on their own, they send in their, their work to the tutors, the tutor sends feedback to individual students. The only time that they ever meet is in tutorials, and even there they don't have to do group work, and even there they don't have to attend. All our tutorials are um, voluntary, so our students can get through the whole course until the very final exam without ever meeting anyone. <laughs> and now expecting them suddenly because they're working online and because they can do it suddenly to collaborate and, and be a group just didn't work you, you have to do something to make them into a group to form a, a group to, to give them some incentive of why they should do collaboration rather than everybody do the, the little bits and uh, and work on their own and there's also the, there's a difference between collaboration and, and cooperation it's, it's possible to give them a task so structured that you say uh, somebody has to do page one to five in the book and the next person has to do five to ten, but that is not collaboration. That, that's a distribution of work and everybody does a little bit in the end to come together and make a puzzle out of this. But what we wanted to encourage is actually students working together and by creating knowledge together, by discussing and by uh, asking questions, by giving feedback to each other and to creating a little bit that's more than the sum of its individual parts. The combination of asynchronous and synchronous work is also something that's um, typically for distance teaching anyway, and it works very well on, online because our students are used to it. They know that they have the discipline to actually go within that week to go on the website and check their task and check what they have to do. And they also have the discipline to meet online. This one time they week really have to be online then they will be maybe 10 minutes late, but they will be there. Um, what other important lessons learned if we're still working on that is the training of tutors, of course, and the training of, of students for the online work. Now let me move on to a real course, and that is actually already in existence and has started in February, in February 2009. It's, uh, it's called Motive and it's an upper intermediate German course. We redesigned the course, the original course started I think in 1998 and it was um, based on books and videos at that time still and I think CDs but it didn't have any online element when it started. Uh, it's a 60 point course, um, it runs for nine months from February to October and at the moment this version of the course has five books, three DVDs, additional print materials like assessment uh, guides or um, computing guides. And uh, the spine of the course is actually online. The spine of the structure of, uh, for the course is online. So again it's got the, the movie website, the typical uh, column in the middle where the whole calendar is. And it's got news for on one side and resources because there are lots of, of resources that are available in, in print but also as downloadable PDFs online. And there's additional um, resources under the section color where you can have all the, the additional tools and uh, tasks that students do over the whole course. 
but in the middle there's the study planner or the calendar, again structured in weeks, and within the week the task, the individual tasks the students have to do. And a new feature that we've introduced now is this little tick on the right hand side. It's very nice for students once they've finished the task, they've done enough work on, let's say, the, the survey about how good the websites are, then they can tick it off and it will appear on uh, Moodle will memorize that it will appear when it gets log in. We've done this task, we can move on to the next one. So that's just a graphic representation of the elements of Motive. You've got the central, um, in the centre the study guide that organises students. In this course that's still written in English, so that's, that's an easy entry point for, for students. Um, and it also explains what the different elements are. So this is the, the sort of the, the chicken out the clause, because this is if students are frightened of going to the computer first of all. They're supposed to start on the website. If they're frightened, they still have got a piece of paper they can hold on to and read through what they're supposed to do once they get online. There's a, a little bit of a um, halfway house. It's not yet everything online. And it might never be. It might not be because because of our clientele as well, because of our student, uh, our students, they are not your typical 18 to 22 year old, they are, they're not majorly computer literate, actually the oldest graduate from the Open University was 94 years old, but it's by far not the oldest student we had, I had my beginner's German course, I had a 104 year old student, so <laughs> <laughs> but they still study, <laughs> they might not finish all the, their degrees, but they we still study. And for, for them, it's important to have this traditional way into a course, just something to hold on to, something to read through, and somebody that to help them to log on, to get on, online, and start their studies like that. There's still the uh, print elements, so there's four books, and there's a study guide, five books altogether. And there's the DVD ROMs with interactive uh, tasks on there, but they're offline, they're not online elements. Um, and there's also set films. Can I speak up? Okay. <laughs> there's also a set film for, for the students to, to watch. And very importantly, there's the personal tutor. They've got one tutor allocated to them. They can ask them, uh, the tutor all sorts of questions, but they've also got <coughs> backup for other um, questions and problems they might have. There's a, a big OU community, there's other students, and there's also the uh, the study help you can get for general study questions and there's a technical help desk available 24 hours uh, a day. And they've got their peers in the tutor group, they can meet them online. So I'll, I'll just skip that because it just explains in writing what I showed you on the graphic. Um, so the students have this in print format, they know what to do. They can do all the, um, the book tasks, they can do offline, they can do the DVD ROM tasks, they have to have a computer for that or have to have use of a computer for that, but they don't have to be online, and then they've got lots of online tasks as well. Um, there's just one example of a task, one of the online <coughs> tasks, it's a forum task for the students fairly early in Thema 1, so it's in the, in the first months of the course. Um, it asks them to do some internet research first, so it gives a description of what the task is. It also gives a descri description of learning outcomes. Why am I doing that? Because I want to learn recovery for this and that. Um, it gives, offers some links to websites where they can start the, the internet search, and then the forum instructions where they go into the forum and discuss with other students what they have found. Um, it's also, this task specifically is used as a preparation for assessment. So this task is integrated in, in multiple ways. It integrates the, the print materials, so the topic that's chosen, there's some vocabulary preparation in the print materials and the books for this. Uh, it integrates with the tutor group by asking them to go to the forum and discuss with their peers in, in the forum. Um, it integrates the tools, the web, uh, web search, the print materials and also the, the forum and it's integrated into the whole course structure by the assessment because they have to do some preparation to do the, the assignment successfully. And that's now the 
promised you before, that's the Illuminate our new software for uh, teaching online for our language tutorials. And yes, it's again a nice toy I like to play around with. Uh, um, it's a, com a commercial software, it's not like Moodle that you can just go in and get it, you actually have to pay for using it. Apart from that, there are trial versions available, of course. But it is commercial software, um, but it is created for online teaching and it's fully integrated into the Moodle VLE. So students log into their website, into the course website, and there is the link to the tutorials. You don't have to go anywhere else. Um, the materials for the tutorials are prepared by the course team. So we create some of the materials. And as you can see from this screenshot, the focus is actually on the on the content, it's not so much on the on the speaker. So there's a, a list of people who are speaking on the left hand side, it's just me locked in at the moment. Um, there's the speaking button at the bottom there, so it's not that important. The focus is definitely on this whiteboard, on the screen here where you can um, either have images or just text, or you can have drag and drop activities, interactive um, tasks if you want to. This, for example, is a drag and drop where you reorder the sentences in the right thing to the, to the left hand side. It's got a lot of additional functionalities which I won't even mention, and we don't use all of them. Uh, but it, it's got one where you can take students on the web tour, or you can take them to different websites, which makes it lovely to update and, um, your materials. You can take them to today's news in the newspaper, for example. Okay, the editing the site might look like a pain to some of you, but actually I, I find it makes the courses so much more flexible. It makes it possible for the course team, course members, to write new entries, to add uh, the section at resources, at links if something happens in, in the news column or even within the course materials. Um, if you write in advance, you can hide some of the resources from students and reveal them later as they go through the course. It's also got a news forum where you can alert students to any mistakes in the materials, for example, you don't have to send out a stop press uh, messages anymore and tell them that on page 55 there's a a typo which just added to that news forum. And some of um, my colleagues have used the, the forums for a media author forum where that one, in one week during the course uh, she asked the author of the chapter that the students were just dealing with to join in the forum, to join in the debate and to ask the students to ask questions. So if they had any questions about this week's topics they could ask directly the author uh, for, for some responses. And the students know that. that they had the feeling that they could react to their course materials a lot more immediately. Okay, so that's the first two months of student usage on, on the website, on the uh, Motive course website. And as you can see, February, 83.7% um, of students logged in and used the website. Uh, in March, 85%. And it just means that those who have tried it once can see the benefit of it and probably are going back again. They also don't just visit once, they visit 19.7, almost 20 times over the months. It's quite a, quite a lot of online work they're doing that. Okay, then very quickly, um, the last example I wanted to give you, that's Variationen, our course in advanced German. Uh, I can only talk a little bit about that because we're just writing it, so there is no final product for that yet. So just a few websites, a few uh, tasks that we've written, but no books as yet, and nothing edited. It will be a 60 point course starting in February 2010. Uh, Three books, a study guide, one laser book, so it's a cultural reader, and one Arbeitsbuch, a workbook for students, a set film but no DVD rooms. We're going to put all the AV materials online and the activities to do with AV mm. materials as well. The spine of the structure of the course again are going to be online and also the interactive tasks as with Motiva. But the big <coughs> difference here is, let me just show you that, that's the course website as it looks at the moment. This is just used by the course team to exchange um, ideas to upload tasks that we might want to use uh, later in the course, so this is the playground before the actual course works. 
But what I wanted to show you the big difference between the Motiva course and this course is that there's content presented online. There's content on the web, um, which has advantages and disadvantages, as you all know. That you have to consider visibility. You have to consider that students actually read or might be reading from a screen. Some students don't like that, so there is the option of uh, printing it off. There's a printable version. Uh, the same text can be printed uh, off as, as PDF files and looks the same with readable. Um, still, it's easier to, to navigate on here and it's also searchable, documented searchable as it is on, online. Okay, so let's get to the integrating online elements now. Only fully online courses have only online elements, so there will be uh, some courses that will use online elements only for interaction, for example, um, or for online communication. Interaction can be with a computer, with a machine, as well as with other people. Communication normally is with people. Um, can be used for online tutorials only, so that the, the students have print materials or DVDs and only go online for the tutorials. Or it can be used for online assessment, which is a little bit of a tricky issue anyway. Um, or simply online updating. Our courses are normally written for 10 years, so they should, the materials should last for 10 years in lots of subjects and even in languages. You can't have a, um, an up to date course for 10 years, it just gets a little bit old if you're still talking about the uh, football in 2008. Uh, and there's online content as well, so you can add some content. And there's the other elements um, that you have to integrate with the course. You can have print materials, for example, combined with online communication, online tutorials. You can have the AV materials that you still have to use offline and send to students. DVD ROMs, for example. Or you go down the road and say only the how to guides, only for those students who are not confident with the uh, users. You give them the how to guides in print, but from then on they have to go online. Uh, can have face to face tutorials, of course, or you can say just one introductory meeting where you show them how this <coughs> course works. You sit down at the computer, make sure everybody knows how to log in and how to use the tool, and from then on everything is online. So it's up to you how you integrate that. And this is a particularly confusing graphic, and I think that's what most of our students felt as well when they first saw the Cyberdeutsch course. There's a lovely looking red box there, let's just start here. Or there's something that looks interesting, let's, uh, let's go and try that out. I think it, it is really important to make sure that you integrate this course design as you integrate the different tools and the tasks and present this also as one complete course, as one complete box to the students and make sure that whatever elements you choose, books, DVD ROMs, printed guides, AV materials, online exams, that the students know where to go when and what to do on uh, which medium. Okay, challenging. I think I'll, I'll leave you to come up with the challenges and I'll just stop talking here. <laughs> challenges and benefits. If you've got positive points to uh, say as well, we be appreciated, but there's lots of challenges and problems and I'm aware of that. learning, blended learning. Uh, I just even going through